In our last video, we left off after we had uh, set up our WordPress, we installed uh, the theme that we've selected, and now in this uh, brief video, I'm going to show you how to set up uh, the basic settings within uh, any sort of theme, but I'm using StudioPress, uh, but most of the, the, the things that you're going to see here are, are relatively similar. Um, so one, so we'll just go down through here, and I, I literally just uh, click into my theme area, my theme settings, and I just go sort of one at a time down through all of these different categories. Uh, one thing I like to definitely do is set up this uh, notification for to tell me when updates are available. It's so important, so, so important. I can't emphasize this enough to keep your WordPress installation uh, on the latest version, to keep your theme implementations on the latest version because, again, this is going to be uh, take you 90% of the way uh, of keeping your website secure is making sure that you have all the, the current updates uh, in place. Uh, the general, the, uh, the blog title, and this gives you, right now you can see, uh, as we switch over here, you've just got sort of this written title, and we're going to replace that with a logo in the future. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. It's a little more complex. I'll show you how to do that at the end, uh, and also how to get sort of a nice logo design for you. So we're going to leave this uh, as dynamic text. Uh, I like to widgetize the right side of the header. We're going to go back and I'll show you how to use that. That's this section over here so that you could literally uh, drop things in there at will. So we're going to leave that uh, connected. Uh, site layout, I, again, most of these things I don't really adjust. All the navigation I leave in place. You can get very fancy with this, uh, but I go with the default settings. Uh, your comments. Um, again, I usually leave the defaults. It depends on what you're doing. Some websites, I don't activate comments at all, so I would actually take these off, the comments and the trackbacks, because I don't want uh, engagement on certain sites for a variety of different reasons. But generally, uh, the whole purpose of, of having a website is to engage with your audience, so I leave the comments um, and the trackbacks on. Uh, oftentimes, I will, however, take out the trackbacks. Um, because a lot of times spammers will start to track back to your site. So uh, if that becomes a problem, you can just simply go in here and, and turn those trackbacks off. But generally, uh, in a new website, it's nothing to worry about. Um, then the next thing I'm going to do um, is the redirecting to a feed burner feed. I think this is a better way to manage. It gives you some flexibility for email signups as well as regular RSS. It gives you great compatibility across a bunch of different uh, types of RSS feed readers. Uh, this may or may not be important to you, but th this is how to do it, and this is the way I do it, is manage it through FeedBurner, which is feedburner.google.com. Uh, I went ahead and put in my uh, URL on a, a previous page, and you, as you can see, it went ahead and detected where my feed, RSS feed location is on this particular blog, so I don't even have to figure that out. Uh, and you can click whichever one you want. This is the main feed for everything. This is the comments feed. You're going to want the main feed, so it's probably going to be this top selection. And then you just hit next. And it's going to do all of its Google thing. And there's a lot of things to sort of set up uh, inside of here later. Um, I just sort of leave it as default, but there's there's a lot of things you can do to sort of optimize this. Uh, I might take you through it just depending on how much time we have here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put this in here. Uh, we're just going to make sure that we have the right Detroit Online Marketing. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, so I'm going to redirect the feed. So now FeedBurner is managing all my RSS. Um, the rest of this I'm going to leave the same. Uh, I will adjust this. Um, let's go ahead and do that. This is sort of an important part. So I'm going to go ahead and save my settings. So I want to have a, a blog associated with the website because it's all going to look like a website. So um, I, I still, that blog component is, is pretty important. So the way I always set that up is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a category. And I'm going to call it blog. It's going to do that for me automatically. And we're going to add that new category. 
So now I have a, a blog category. I'm gonna do a quick edit here. No. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna make this the default. Um, and actually, I'm gonna go ahead. I should be able to do this. Oh well, we'll do that later. But. Eventually, I'm going to make the blog the default category because invariably you will forget to mark something and it, it just really looks bad if, if your whole website has uncategorized. So, um, so anyway, let's go back here and we're going to finish off uh, our theme settings. Okay, so the next and the last thing that we need to do is to install our Google Analytics. And what you do is you just go over to Google Analytics, set up an account if you don't already have one, uh, and then you're going to, again, just type in, type in your new website. It's so important to, to be able to look at your site stats and, and to understand what's going on with them. Once you've entered in and double-checked your spelling and everything, we're going to create this new Google Analytics account so it can start tracking. It's going to give me some tracking code here. And I'm just literally going to cut and paste and put into that little box. And now when I go back here, it's going to show me all my site stats. Uh, so I can see you know, who's visiting um, and what they're doing on the site, what they find is most interesting. And then again, I go ahead and, and save my settings. And you can see it, it really hasn't changed anything. You're, you're just sort of setting up the back end uh, settings here to, to make sure that all this is, is happening right. Uh, for the feed burner, you can, you can, uh, those will all be uh, redirected. You can look at that down here in the bottom corner. You'll see that that is actually going to feed burner now, uh, which will give you a little bit different. I'm going to run through real quick sort of how I set this up, just sort of the basic settings so that you have a feel for what you need to do here in feed burner. Again, most of this stuff can operate pretty much out of the box if, if you choose. Uh, but there are a couple little tweaks. Uh, I like to know click-throughs. Again, you can pretty much operate with all the defaults. But um, So let's, let's click through each of these tabs one at a time and, and make our small adjustments. Okay, so there's nothing to see here. I'm going to go into optimizing it. Um, I like to do this smart feed. This makes it compatible with a whole bunch of different feed readers. So go ahead and activate that. And again, you can look at all these different things. There's going to be a lot of other things that you may want to turn on. Uh, we're going to go into publicize. Um, this one's important. Um, email subscriptions. I like to do this. It gives the option for them to subscribe versus for via email uh, versus just RSS. A lot of people don't really understand RSS uh, and they much prefer the email so that'll give them just an email every time you post so that's important. Uh, and there's some customization that you probably want to do in there but I'm not going to go into that. Uh, this is really important. This is actually going to notify all the different uh, services out there that you've posted a new blog post so this will get uh, stuff out faster. Um, so definitely do that. And those are really the only things that I set up, at least initially in FeedBurner. You can explore uh, some more features. There's just a ton of things in there. But uh, that's the basics of setting up my theme settings, getting my RSS feed set up correctly, and my Google Analytics installed. And we'll see you in the next video where I'll show you how to set up your uh, basic uh, settings for WordPress itself. Hope to see you then.